Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I achieved the sky and the palm tree underdrawing. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Now we'll be doing this as a freehand method and a cross-reference method. So first of all I've put a centre point in the middle of my board and I've got the same on my reference image. So the first thing I did was get the horizon line in there. Right, just to illustrate how I do the cross-reference, see the cursor, I'm just moving it in the middle of the actual image there, just so you can see where I'm pointing to. Now there's a top scale there, which is the width of 16 inches, and then the depth scale, which is the depth of 21 and a half inches. Now it's just a case of putting this cursor on a point anywhere where you want it measuring. Say if I wanted to measure this point of that leaf there, so I'll place that on that point there, then if you look at the side, there's actually a, uh, a dotted line that's giving you the actual measurement, and same on the top here. And it's just a case of reading that measurement and then you've got a measurement to measure on the board. You've got the width and then you've got the depth. So it's just a case of finding that on the board and just place a little dot where it is. And just keep going around different areas. Don't have to go crazy. Just enough to give you a location of certain things and then just freehand the rest of it. It just makes life a little bit easier on a big painting like this. Now the pencil I'm using is a Carbothello 708 which is slightly darker than the pastel matte board I'm using. Now if I need to rub that out you can hardly see where that pencil's been so that's why I use that colour or colour shade. Now I'm loosely putting these marks in just a little bit of cross reference but mainly freehand. You have to be careful that this method don't become a crutch because you tend to want to put too, more, too many marks in if you're not careful because you're scared to actually guess where things are. So I tend to just put a little bit in and but then carry on with the freehand because it, it keeps the freedom of expression there and it's more enjoyable when it's more sort of spontaneous and free flowing because it can become quite mechanical if you're not careful. Now the razor I'm using is a Faber-Castell kneadable razor. Really great to have in your kit because it really does take off the mark quite cleanly and it don't damage the surface of the pastel mat. So this is the outline almost complete now because the underdrawing is where I'll start shaping everything and start putting the form in. Now just keeping the pencils quite simple, just using a light ultramarine, blue, white and then the grey. Now the reason I'm using grey is because it's a neutral colour, so I can always change that to any colour, not create any mud. So that's why I'm using grey to draw out the underdrawing. So at any point I can just change that grey into a sky colour or a leaf colour, so it doesn't matter really, so it's easy to move around. Now doing it in grey like I'm doing here for the underdrawing will keep everything nice and relaxed because I can always change that up. Now if I went straight in there with green it'll be so difficult because you'd have so much detail to put in it's very hard to put it into the correct place. But with it being in grey you can move things around so um, it's just getting the structure right and the placement so all the outline is for and underdrawing is just to get the shapes in the right place. Now sometimes it's good to get some colour in there as well because you can freeze a little bit with the amount of detail and when you've got some colour down, no matter how rough you put it down, you've made a start. So it just takes that tension away of wondering what to do. But best to just Put the colour down and just play about with it really, just see it as play rather than trying to get too wrapped up in all the details too soon. Now here's a little bit of real time just to show you how I'm doing this. Um, it's just a case of just relaxing 
and just feeling your way and comparing one shape with the other shape and putting more pressure on where the highlights are and less where it's mid-tone. So this is the beauty of using the grey as well so you can just move it around and put more white to it to make it a grey and, and it keeps everything so simple and where the sky is shining through the leaves um, you can once you've got that position right you can just go over with a bit of blue so it's a case of just keep persevering with it and just take your time and just enjoy it really and just feel the freedom just let it flow from you keep out of the mind because if you go away too much into the mind and try and look at all the details it'll freeze you so keep the reference image quite small so you see the shapes easier if you're enjoying this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos when you're applying the grey just press on more for the darker areas so more pressure and less pressure for the mid-tones just focus using the grey and the white to shape everything up and then glaze blue or like a pinky colour just add a bit of cold red with the blue to create the sky which is behind the leaves don't look too far ahead as well don't, don't look at all the leaves you've got to do or she'll freeze with tension because the amount of work is involved just one step at a time just keep judging the shapes and the angles from what you've already drawn and just keep persevering with it and what I did there really was to put all these sort of white tops of the branches in there first just to get the balance of where things go and then just fill in the middle with the grey and the white and then start shaping up then once I get the basic shape so just start with the big shapes first and then get smaller and smaller and more detail another tip to keep you relaxed is to actually try and do the same shapes as close as you can to what you see so you're not too random with it uh, it's expressive but it's not too expressive it's close to the reference image so it helps you to find a pattern and then you don't lose your way because if you if you're too random it's a case that you can get lost in all that detail now when you put in the sky in you'll find that it's quite sort of grainy to start with because it's a sanded board the pastel matte surface so you need to sort of build up the layers so you have to be patient with it so I'll put some pigment down then use my finger a lot to rub it in here's the selection of pencils I'll be using for the subtleties in the clouds and the sky now using the grey pencil again now just to shape the actual distant islands there the shoreline and once I'm happy with the shape I just glaze over with a bit of blue and a lemon yellow then I'm using a combination of different greys from the Carbothello. Some's more bluier, some's more sort of creamier. There's all sorts of different shades of uh, greys that you can get in the Carbothello range. Really nice range to have. This one here I'm using now is a very light grey, which is ideal for the clouds just to shape it up. Rather than going to, with the white, because the white is too stark, where that grey really just suits the sort of subtlety I'm wanting. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all my patrons for all their wonderful support every month. I really appreciate you pledging, it really means a lot to me. Now if you're interested in joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please find the link in the description below. This painting will be on there as a probably 5 or 6 hour long video. It'll be around September 2022 when it'll be on but you'll be able to see it in more detail because I give all the brand names of the pencils and all the list of numbers I've used also I give more exclusive narration as well because uh, I've got more time to explain things so if you're interested in that be sure to have a look at the link in the description below 
So what I've decided to do really is to create my own sky, but keep it similar to the pattern of things there. But instead of that sort of fluffiness of the clouds and broken up bits, I've, I've kept it more together and more sort of smoother. Um, so basically what you do first is block it in with richer colours and more closer colours. So that's what I'm doing here, just blocking everything in. Then once you're happy with the position of it, uh, just glaze over them with the primary colours. I'm using a cold red and then the ultramarine blues and then I'm using an orange in places and also the lemon yellow. So I'm mainly blending really with pencil over pencil. These chalkier Carbothello pencils are ideal really to sort of blend out. Now you can use the Caran Dash pencils which are richer in vibrancy you can put them down but then smooth over them with the chalkier pencils because then the Carbothello ones mix in with the pigment of the Caran Dash to create really nice rich soft colours. There's the orange and ultramarine blue which are going to create nice greys so what it is is to create a grey, always use the complementary colour. So a complementary colour of blue is orange. So when you mix blue and orange together, it makes subtle either blue greys or orangey greys. It creates a natural shade, a natural sort of shadows. It creates quite an interesting feel to it. Rather than just using grey, I always try and mix them on the final coats to create this natural look. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. Using a cold red with that combination of blue and orange together to create subtle purples as well as the grey tones. So it's a case of just mixing it up really. Just keeping the, these things basic, it creates quite beautiful colour harmonies and they look quite natural together as mentioned earlier. Now I tend to use the Caran Dash Chinese White for clouds. This is really great for bringing out the vibrancy that you can put this white down and then that will shine through the colour you put on the top. Now in some places where it's duller and not so vibrant you can get away with using the Carbothello white but you won't be able to get this sharpness and vibrancy with that brand name so that's why I like to use the Caran Dash in places so if you can't really afford the set of Caran Dash just buy the white and that will put you in good stead because that white could mix in with any other pigment you've got whichever brand it is to create a really nice rich vibrant pigment so when you're working out colours, it's not just about values, it's also about the chroma, how colours glow against other colours. So it's getting that sort of feeling and also edges as well. Some edges needs to be sharp, some needs to be soft. It's all a matter of getting that balance. Now with skies, they tend to be more ultramarine blue towards the top of the sky and as you go towards the bottom of the sky towards the horizon the more sort of warmer more sort of turquoisey so what i've used here is an ultramarine blue it's slightly different to what you're seeing on the actual image there um, i didn't really like the look of it it looked a bit flat and a bit dull a bit desaturated so what I know from looking at life and drawing from life is that the colours are more sort of richer and vibrant and um, so what I've done is is actually drawn from memory and changed it up a little bit. This is sometimes you have to do that with the photographs, they're not always accurate. So what I've done is just changed it up to what I feel uh, is suitable for the painting. Now I've altered the sort of bittiness of all the sort of broken cloud there and smoothed it together more into like wisps of clouds, again working from what I've seen in nature. 
so making it sort of more softer rather than too sort of broken up like that I think it just draw the eye a little bit too much now when I start putting the water in I will actually change the vibrancy of those clouds to suit the water it's always best to save these things till the last so when you look at the painting as a whole when it's all the elements are in there then you can change these things up there's no good putting loads of detail in those clouds if it's not the correct shade or vibrancy so I'll leave that right at the end Just a little bit more detail here, some real time, so you could see how I'm shaping up the actual branches and leaves there. Just working through, I'm just putting some like light grey there I'm using, and then what I'll do then is glaze with blue on the top uh, to create the right shade. But again, all this will be sort of subtled up when everything's in there, everything's in place, I'll create or the sort of vibrancy of what's needed. Right, so I sharpened my pencils and I got out my bob stick. Now this is a stick I, I use for my oil painting. It's got like a bit of a ball at the end. It's just a metal rod really, just something to lean on rather than using glassine paper. And basically I'm just sort of refining the actual leaves just making sure then I've got the correct gaps and the structure is correct and then putting the blue in that's needed in certain areas or the cloud colour in certain areas just to make it sort of more um, sort of correct in the shape and everything so when I start putting the green in there it'll be a lot easier so while I've got the grey out the master will get the the all the structure right so when you go over with the green it's more straightforward this is where it's really handy when you just do it using grey because you can just put a bit of sky in there a bit of cloud in, over the grey and it's no problem at all you're not creating any mud and the colours are fresh so it's a great way really to get the structure and to feel comfortable then when you start putting all those rich greens and yellows in that foliage. So looking forward to next video where I'm going to show you how I achieve all that, all the rich greens and the depth of those shadows. So be sure to watch out for part two. Thank you so much for watching the video so far. Hope you've enjoyed part one. Now part two, I'll be covering how I put the colors on the leaves and the branches and also the, the bark of the tree. So be sure to watch out for that. Now, if you're interested in watching any more of my work, here's a series link that you might be interested in. Take care.